and one industry that I like a lot in the is the video game industry because I am a gamer. And one game that I especially love is Hollow Knight. I don't know if you know it. And because it's a video game, it's software. And that means lines of code, text, just like any software. And this game has fantastic graphics engine, a real-time physics engine that allows for the collisions and the bounces and everything, a great story, fantastic designs, a great piece of software that maybe some of you have played, right? Uh, so if we look at this piece of software with the same lenses that we were using before, I don't know how many lens of code Hollow Knight has because it's not open source, but what I do know is that it was made by three people in four years. And these are the numbers that they were able to make. The net revenue per person is $20 million, a bit, a bit less than $20 million. This is, an, in fact, they use Unity in this case. Video game engines are nothing more than the maximum common denominator of all video games, meaning the pieces that you would need to create any video game, the graphics engine, the physics engine, the MPC system, all the pieces that at the same time are the hardest pieces to implement, the pieces where you need math and low level graphics knowledge and physics so that the team Cherry, the guys who made Hollow Knight, were able to focus just on the pieces that are easier, but also the pieces that make people buy their game. Because let's be honest, nobody buys Hollow Knight for the graphics engine or nobody buys Hollow Knight for the physics engine. They buy it because it has a great story and a great design and it makes you feel things when you play it, right? When we go back to this, we realize that we also have a maximum common denominator in our industry because no matter what BIM, what BIM software we are talking about, um, they all need a 3D graphic system. They all need a geometry engine. They all need, you know, to be able to import and export a, a specific set of formats. So if we had this maximum common denominator available in our industry, the same way that they have it in the video game industry, probably it would be much easier for new players to come and compete with the existing big incumbents without having to reinvent the wheel over and over and over again, right? And this is what we are trying to do. We are, we are basically creating this maximum common denominator, but instead of bundling it as an end user application and selling it, we are making it open source so that anyone can build on top. And in fact, there are many startups and companies using it as a stepping stone to not having to do this again and again and again. What you're, you're saying is that basically companies have to reinvent the wheel uh, every time they have a new 3D modeling app or Clash or whatever. And first, it's kind of wasted time and energy because they should share the, the common parts of, of what they do. And also, it's problematic for smaller companies because it's more difficult to get into the game, right? Yeah, let's imagine that you, are, you and I are building a takeoff and estimation application. We are a startup, right? Uh, without the things that we and other people built in open source, the, this com maximum common denominator, the first step is, okay, let's make a 3D graphics engine so that we can, um, you know, show people the buildings that they import in or into our application. But the truth is that this is not what we are selling. We are selling the takeoff and estimation logic, right? So mm -hmm. these pieces that everyone needs, but nobody sells, are the pieces that we are creating.